Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today I have kind of a technique video for you and also an art journaling video and I want to use one of our or some of our new stencils today combined with brushes. Um, these are water soluble pigment powders and um, they are similar to the Nouveau Shimmer powders just without shimmer. Um, they flow a bit better than the Nouveau powders and it's also similar to the Lindy's Magicals, the Color Bursts or the Infusions. I believe brushes were the first on the market so I go for brushes and um, for this art channel page I'm going to use one of these leaves. Um, this is a set combining uh, two masks with a stencil. Um, before we start, I just want to flip through all the new stencils we have in the shop. The stencils are limited, so uh, once they are gone, we will not reorder them. Um, but of course, we are planning on having new designs with our new release. Um, the stencils are super high quality. They are produced in the UK. And they are quite heavyweight, so um, you can use them perfectly with texture paste. Um, but there are so many techniques you can do with stencils. Even dry embossing works amazing. I shared this over on our Robidens Instagram page. And this is the, sten the stencil with the leaves. They are going in there. And you can... I, I love this. I didn't expect them to be so nice and um, we will definitely have some different designs in this kind of style in the future. They are working so great and they are making so nice um, textures or elements. I'm starting with the art journal page because I want to uh, let the, the background dry and while it's drying I will share more techniques on how I used the brush shows. Um, I clipped the paper so the paper does not warp um, because I'm using a lot of water with brush shows. That tends to happen. And I spritzed this spread with water and now I'm just adding the, the powders. And you can see how amazing they are flowing into the wet areas. The brushes have different kinds of pigments in them. Um, when it says orange, it's not pure orange. It's kind of a mixture of different pigments, which makes them quite interesting. Um, they come in a big variety of colors. I don't think you need all of them uh, because they are so nice and um, with so many different shades within one color. I think when you have 12, it's you're good to go. I'm spritzing a bit more water. It's always a, a trial and error with this technique. And sometimes you get a mess on your page, but sometimes you get really nice results, which will surprise you. And it's also a lot of fun um, doing this. Before I'm removing that mask of the leaf, I will let this dry a bit because otherwise um, when I remove it now, the water will run everywhere and then I won't be able to see any of that image that I've created. Um, it might be that I'm, I'm talking with my hands a lot during the video. Um, that's because I recorded this live in German. So if you watch this in Germany, in German, you can... Um, it, it's kind of a live video, just not live, but recorded live. And that's my, that might be um, why my, my hands are not matching my words. Um, I laid the page aside and here I'm working with, I believe it's the Canson Mixed Media cardstock. It's a 200 GSM, very smooth mixed media cardstock. I love to use this um, for card making or for tags or artist trading cards. And I will now start with my first background and I'm using the ink dots stencil and I'm just applying the brush over the dry surface. Um, I think 
The first one was um, Alicerin Crimson and this is Gamboche and I don't know which else color I am using. I will write the color names that I've used today in the video description so um, you will find that out. I mentioned it in my German video but I don't have it on mind at the moment and as I'm making the voice over with my phone it everything is so small that I can't read what I'm doing on screen. Um, you don't need much of the powder. A little goes a very long way and I have these powders for years. I don't know how long I have them. Um, I would say for at least uh, seven years and look how much pigment I have left in my favorite color that's turquoise. I use this so often because I love turquoise. So um, I think if you buy some brushes, you will have them a lifetime. And now I come in with water and spritz my stencil. And this is also, depending on the amount of water you're using, you will get different results. And that's something you have to experiment with. And that's for me the fun part. You get so many nice backgrounds. I have a bunch of backgrounds here that wanted to be used. And I also love how the colors are mixing. I let this sit a little bit to give um, the pigment a chance to sink a bit into the paper. And now I'm pressing another sheet of the same paper on top and make kind of a print from the leftover um, ink that I have on top of the stencil. And that's a really nice result, I think, and um, it's a quite interesting technique. That's what I love about stencils so much that you can create so many different kinds of, of textures um, from, from just dry embossing with a stencil to creating texture with dimension with um, a structure paste or just using it with watercolor or the water-based ink or making card backgrounds with ink pads. There are so many ways to use stencils. I really love both backgrounds. I will share projects with these backgrounds over on my Instagram page, so I make sure to check that out. I will link it up in the video description. Um, and there I will post all the projects I'm doing with the backgrounds. I will also make some photos of these backgrounds and put them on the blog post that goes with the video. There is also a link in the video description and there you can have a closer look at the finished backgrounds. Next I'm going to do a similar technique, almost the same. Um, just a little bit different, but you will see that I'm using the leaves stencil. I really like this pattern. It makes amazing backgrounds and um, I was really surprised because um, it was not my favorite design. I liked it, but now after I made some projects with it, I really uh, love this one. This time I am also sprinkling the powder over the dry surface and then I'm going to spritz it with water. But instead of placing another paper on top, I will remove the first one and then make a print with the stencil. With this technique you have two options. You can just leave the stencil there and let it dry. Then you will get sharper edges there where the, the pigments um, hang on the edges of the stencil. That is quite interesting and that also works nice when you use normal watercolors. But I wanted to keep on and I'm really happy how this turned out. 
and I removed the stencil and now I will make my print. So um, this makes sure that this does not affect the first uh, background I made when I press the paper on top of the stencil. So you can use both techniques and experiment which one you like the most. The paper I've used for this one is the Canson XL watercolor paper and I cut a tag from it. Um, it's also a nice paper for card making. Um, it's a bit more sturdy than the mix, mixed media paper. Um, and I also like it for stamping because it has just a slight texture to it. That's a bit boring, I would say, the background, but still quite nice. And I think um, you can later add to your background with more stenciling, with stamping or collage to finish it up. I now want to try this technique and leave the stencil on the paper until it's dry. So I'm doing it now and we wait until the end of the video and then you can see how this will turn out. I'm really sorry about some, um, some time that is in between. Uh, when I'm doing the video live in German, I always talk a bit too much, I think, and then I have quite long breaks in between. I put that uh, paper onto another piece of scrap paper just so I can take it and lay it aside to dry. And this is the organic stencil. I love this one. It's great for um, ocean, an ocean background, but you can also turn it around um, and use it in the other direction. Um, this is where I also really like it. And this is how I designed it and that it looks like ocean waves. I just figured out when I used this one. Um, I'm using blue colors of the brushes, almost just a little bit of the sandstone on the top so I get also an ocean theme background and maybe I can create a card with it or something else that has a nautical theme. What would probably be better is um, taping down your paper to a plain sturdy surface. So it does not buckle when you spray it with water because when it buckles uh, the stencil will come off in some areas and that will, won't will give you a perfect uh, image later. Uh, but I don't mind that. I love surprises. My art journal page that I've started is almost dry, not 100%. But I am just curious to see how it turned out. And I'm going to remove that mask now. And I had a bit too much water on top. I don't mind that. I really like how it is looking and I will add to the page to finish it up. Um, but first I'm going to take that leaf where the ink is still wet and we'll just print it to a piece of the mixed media paper. It's almost like stamping just a little bit more imperfect. And this one will be my focal point later for my page. Here I'm soaking up the excess water that I had on the page. Um, I can't remember what, what I was doing. I think I set it aside to let it dry again. And here I'm going to remove that, that mask. And this will give me a really nice image that I will cut out later and use on this art journal page. While this is drying again, I'm going to make another leaf with the stencil of this uh, set. And I am just spraying water through the stencil, a lot of water. Well, not too much. You have to experiment with this technique. And now you don't want to wait too long. Immediately I go in with the brush or powders. You can, of course, use watercolors for this same technique. Just dip in your loaded brush into the water. That will work really nice with high flow watercolors. And 
And now I will just set this aside and let it dry. And when it's dry, I can remove the excess of the powder with a brush. Um, yeah, and then you can cut that out as a focal image or you can just use it as a card background. And this is why I like this stencil combination so much. Next I'm using our small ink dots stencil and I believe I'm going to use this one with the Nouveau Shimmer Powders. The Nouveau Shimmer Powders give you some shimmer when the project is dry, but they don't flow as good as the brushes do. They are more chunky and um, not, not that they don't run as good as the brushes. I often combine them with the brushes, though I have some shimmer on my projects, but not too much, and still the interesting results from the brushes. I think this is quite a bit boring uh, background. Um, what I'm now going to do is I will use the excess ink I have on the stencil and make a print on another tag. And this is what I really like. I think that's a fabulous background. It's so nice and gorgeous to use for all kinds of paper projects, mixed media, card making or scrapbooking. I ha still have some ink on the stencil and I don't want to waste it. And as the first background was quite boring, I thought about using this one um, to add this. First, I thought I would use that background, but I didn't like the color combo. So I'm using this tag, but before I do this, I'm going to dry it a bit um, because the paint is still quite wet on this tag. And I think that was the right decision. It's much better now, much more interesting. Now let's move on to our art journal page. It Everything is dry now and I thought about adding um, something to the top left, um, something that gives me more contrast and I am using that stencil again but before I'm going to use it, I just clean it from the excess of the brushes and I will use it on top together with some acrylic paint to just fill this page. It's quite empty on the top and it needs some contrast and uh, something to, to fill the whole spread. And I'm using acrylic paint from Schminke. It's the Brilliant Violet. And it, it's nice together with the violet I have from the brushes. And I just use a makeup sponge and go over the stencil. When you do this technique, you have to make sure not to use too much of the paint um, because then it easily runs under your stencil. It's a bit hard in an art journal to do this technique because it's a bit more bulky than a plain piece of paper. But as I said, I don't want to have anything perfect. Um, so I am totally fine with that. I really like the result. Um, I will just fill some more areas with the paint and then we will finish up the journal page with a little bit of stamping and the focal image. I just get some more of the paint and I use the sponge again and fill up the corner on the top left 
and a little bit more around that leaf. For the background I'm using one of our new stamp sets, it's the Mix Sentiment in the clear version. It has almost the same words as the Mix Sentiment sets 1, 2, 3. Um, just it has four word blocks with different words. Some are on there twice, the, the ones that um, you need more often. And what I do, I usually stamp them, here I have embossed them, and then I cut out the words that I want to use. But what I also like to use them for, or one of them for, is to create a bit of interest on a background. And therefore I'm using the a Stazon, I believe it's called Royal Purple. I didn't want to use black because it would be too too hard against the page. I thought the dark purple will be just fine. And I really like how this is turning out. I really love that page. Um, next I'm planning to add a little bit more stamping with um, with the rusty brown from Stazon. It matches the orangey color quite well. And I'm going to use our number stamp and I believe it's the number stamp from our Mix It Up One stamp set. It It's existing twice. It's one time on the Mixed Media Mark set, but a bit smaller than on the Mix It Up set. And I have this stamp two times because I love it so much. I think it matches almost every project and I wanted to have it in different sizes. And here I just use it with the Stay Zone and I just stamp it. Uh, in a few areas. I don't want to overdo the spread because I really like how it's looking. I'm now adding that focal image and I will just use some liquid glue to adhere it and I will finish up the page with some words of the Mix A Sentiment stamp set. I will share a photo of the finished spread in the end and you will also find it on my blog post. And now let's have a look what has happened with that card where I let that stencil dry. And I think it turned out really nice. It would have been more perfect if I had stick down the paper with some kind of washi tape to make sure it does not buckle. But I really like it. And of course now I have some dried brushes on the stencil. And I don't want to waste that. So I'm going to just re-wet the stencil and use the paint or the ink again. Instead of working on the piece of scrap paper I decided to use another card under the stencil and then spritz it and make a print with it. We will see how it's turning out and what I said in the beginning if it's not a perfect background you can always add to it um, or use it for example for die cutting. That also is um, 
really nice, a really nice technique when you have backgrounds that you're not happy with. Die cut some leaves from it or stamp something on top of it and cut that out. And that will give you often a really nice result. That's quite pretty, isn't it? I really like that background. It's perfect for cards. Um, or I can add something to it and create an index card or use it as a background for a mixed media project. And here is the card from underneath. I just turned around the stencil and pressed it down again. Um, it's not a perfect background, but I think it might be great for that die cutting or for stamping something on it and then cut that out. Yes, I think I'm done for today. It was quite a long video. I hope you enjoyed it and jump over to the blog and have a look at the finished backgrounds. I maybe also have some projects finished up with these backgrounds and here you can see the finished art journal page that I have created. I hope we will see us next time. Bye!